Hey, what's up guys? It's Brian here, Brian's All Maintenance. All right, we're going to be walking through the 2019 MGIA Lawn Care Trade Show up in Metro Detroit, Michigan. As you guys can see, I'm walking on in and I'm doing my usual speech saying trust you guys are doing well. So here's the deal. My microphone port actually broke on my camera, which is a little unfortunate. And so about 80% of the audio is not usable from this whole show. Uh, but a lot of you guys said on Instagram that you wanted to see all the new stuff and the latest and greatest from our show. So I said, you know what? Let's do a voiceover. So the audio will cut back and forth between some of the uh, clips that were usable and then just some of the audio that I get to show you guys here. Uh, doing a little walkthrough and telling you guys what's new from the show. So as my usual intro, I'm trusting you guys are all doing well. All right, so the cool thing about this MGA show is that it was held, uh, held and hosted right in my backyard, Novi, Michigan. Uh, they got a lot of uh, awesome people that were there. Brandon, as you guys see right here with Envision Landscape Solutions, and then also my friend Mike Bedell. We all uh, ran on up there together. It was a really, really good time. Uh, this right here is the first booth. Right when we walked into the right-hand side was the Power Equipment Distributors, or PED, and they had all the brand-new Xmark mowers. This is the distributors for Xmark, and yes, we're going to be running Xmark in 2019. I can't wait. As you guys can see right here, I'm trying to get Brandon in on the action, trying to get him into the mowing game. Now I just have fun. I told him, don't mow. Uh, it'll just uh, consume your life, and you won't have any time for those big-ticket landscape projects, but he was impressed with the looks of that Starus. And you know what? It's going to be a great mower. And yes, we will be running a 52 Cowie Starus coming up here this spring. So I'm really impressed with the uh, the whole unit. It's awesome getting to see it a few more times and doing a walk around with it. And also, as you guys can see right here, is the Billy Goat Stand On Blower. And yes, we have a demo video coming for you guys this spring as well where we should have that unit for about a month. So I'm super excited about uh, doing some video with that, showing you guys a little bit more how the Z3 and the X3 work. This one right here that Brandon and I are looking at, I believe is the, the smaller version, the X3, and then they also have the Z3. Now, if you guys don't know, uh, Billy Goat uh, purchased these guys here just last fall, which is awesome. It used to be Hurricane before. Uh, I think Ferris also gets access to them as well with the uh, Briggs and Stratton family. So what do you guys think about the Hurricane? I think these are pretty slick, and I, I'm digging the color scheme, man. I like the orange and green. I think they're going to be uh, a really cool stand on blower. A lot of you guys in the... Uh, Midwest and on the west side of uh, Michigan swear by these things some guys have fleets of these believe it or not for their leaf cleanup for me personally uh, I haven't personally ran one so I'm excited about getting my hands on one and reporting back to you guys uh, a little pricey I feel you know 9 10 12 grand but you know what the guys that have them they love them and they say it is a game changer hate to use the most overly used word of 2018 but uh, a game changer for those guys when they're doing their spring and fall cleanup so uh, I think they're pretty dope, and I can't wait to get my hands on one for a demo here this upcoming spring. All right, guys, look at this. We get a, what do, you, what do you even call this? It's like a cherry picker. It's like a boom lift. It's for like a lot of the tree guys, and this specific one uh, extends 72 feet, which is crazy. That is nuts, dude. This is definitely new. I've never seen this before at the show. Yeah. They said this is listed for $159,000. Jeez, Pete's. And again, you and I, we're not tree guys. No, not at all. <laughs> I think I said that 38 times in our tree video, our right, chainsaw yeah. video, and everybody's like, we get it, you're not tree guys. No, I'm not yeah, a tree guy. you're not tree guys. <laughs> yeah, I respect the tree guys, man. This yeah, stuff is, yeah. that's some dangerous work if you don't know what you're doing. Check that out. I wonder how this handles though on like a windy day, because a lot of those booms are real sensitive. Uh, yeah. Well, this one's got the tracks, like you were right, uh, yeah, saying earlier. Like I'm sure you can finance it. It's only $1,000 a month for life. <laughs> <laughs> Alright guys, so we're back to the commentary, and unfortunately the audio didn't work on this part as well. This was the little Toro booth that they had uh, set up, and they had two multi-force units uh, on display. One with that turbine fan, and the other one with the snowblade. Uh, shout out to Christian with CNI uh, Lawn Care over in Illinois. He has one of these, and he's the guy on Instagram with the plow. Uh, young man's like 16 years old. He's kicking butt. He's got this exact unit right here. Um, I really liked the uh, option and the idea of having a mower that you could use with snow plow um, attachments and different lawn implements and snow implements, but... I will say uh, on the record that the Toro Multiforce was not my favorite mower uh, to demo uh, in terms of a lawn mower. I feel like it's trying to be a little bit of uh, everything and it didn't nail down the first part of what it should be first. 
which is a lawnmower. Uh, I just feel like it was a little tiny on the frame, a little tiny on those front caster wheels. Uh, but I don't want to throw it under the bus and bash it. A lot of you guys have the dedicated uh, Toro uh, grandstand and love it. Uh, I just feel like the multi-force, uh, it just wasn't for me. And uh, shout out to my friend Elliot with uh, Tool and Hand Construction on Instagram. We went back and forth trying to uh, razz each other about uh, hopping curbs. But you know what? Uh, they are sweet units. Nonetheless, when you can keep your equipment moving all year, uh, I think it has a, a lot of potential. So this might be the wave of the future, you know? All right, guys. One thing that I think is pretty sweet, and this isn't a plug. This is just a selfish thing. Is the Boss V-Box. Curious what you guys think. Salt Dog or the Boss V-Box. Uh, I don't know the price on this. It's probably seven, I eight, think nine grand. Like, yeah, seven to eight grand. Seven to eight grand. Uh, I get the Salt Dog for about four to six. Cheap. That's about 3500 bucks. 3500 Yeah. For the HSPE 2000. I haven't priced them out, but it still looks sweet, These though. These are nice. I know a lot of you guys swear by the boss, and then the other half of the camp swears by uh, using all the salt dog. Check this out. Hey, I mean, that's why you come to the MGIA, right? That's why you come to the shows. You get the touch and feel, look at all the cool stuff, think it through, figure out what makes sense, and just kind of do some shopping. Even though this is snow and uh, ice management, this is seven, eight, nine months from now, but it'll be here before you know it, man. You always gotta keep it going, keep thinking uh, the next part of the business, the next season forward, right? Always gonna be one season ahead, but anyway. Uh, good show so far, man. A lot of good people bumping into a bunch of uh, familiar faces and some of you guys, which is pretty cool. All right, so, all right, we'll keep it moving and we'll show you guys what's new coming up next. All right, guys, so this was another treat. I got to bump into a, another uh, fan while we were at the show. This guy's name is Josh. Uh, he cuts grass, I think, in Canton, Michigan. I love his boss uh, snowplow hoodie. Uh, the cool part with Josh is that he actually just bought a trailer right behind there from Sue and Tim. A lot of you guys have seen them all over Instagram and uh, on YouTube, and especially Brandon and Mike buying their trailers over the last year or two. These guys are in Carlton, Michigan. Really good guys uh, and gals. No, uh, we don't get a kickback for uh, mentioning Kelly and Sons. They're just really good people. Honest, like farm uh, folk that just uh, you know started a trailer company you know 10, 20, 30 years ago probably. And dude, they've just been uh, been kicking butt as the go-to sure track dealer where i live josh right here he's pumped i think he just put in an order for a 7 by 14 uh utility and his business on the grow and i'm super pumped for him uh, i wish this audio uh didn't get cut out because he was dropping a lot of uh good truth bombs and nuggets and uh his business is just on the grow and i think he might be full-time but i think he uh right now is on uh, doing the side hustle thing so good for him uh, i'll actually probably see josh again here why uh at weingart's at the open house on wednesday but uh, while we were there, Brandon's talking to the uh, rep, I think his name is Tony, and learning him a little bit more about his SureTrack dump trailer. Brandon's pumped about that. You guys would imagine. Really nice uh, upgrade for him. But uh, it was really cool bumping into Josh. Uh, Josh kept up with us on Instagram and on YouTube, and, and he's just got it going on. So it was really cool bumping into one of you guys, another fan, and just somebody making it happen. All right, guys, we are checking out the Toro Dingo. What is this, the TXL 2000? This thing is freaking crazy. What do you think, dude? Dude, this thing's sweet. Uh, I did post something about this on Instagram, and a lot of guys were saying that these are like 60 G. That's insane, yeah. But it's I bet a lot you they've already sold. I'm sure they've already sold out of them too, you Definitely, know? Like yeah. people already putting in orders. This is See, cool. that's what I like too, is it's got that extended arm, but I don't know what the capacity is once it's extended out, you know what I mean? Right. Look at the buckets. Look at the tracks. So what do you think? Are you getting one? Are you going to put uh, an order in for one of these? I would definitely get a skid before I get one of these. Well, you're going to get one of these and then also that uh, cherry picker. No cherry picker. It's only 220. <laughs> <laughs> that is crazy. Look at that bucket. That's crazy. You want to jump on? I already hopped on. Oh my god, that thing's a monstrosity. We got the control arms. That's nuts. So you do the little brain and grin, the little smile. You do the little smile. And that's when it's like it's like a like a play structure. Oh yeah. It's like a McDonald's <laughs> like, play play. I'm gonna buy it. I'm gonna buy it. <laughs> Your mind just starts scheming, you know? Yeah, I'll let me jump up here. Up so up. I got the little <laughs> It's nice. I mean, it's I wonder how the mind is. Is this for the Hellfire missiles? This thing's sweet. Yeah, man, you ain't kidding. Look at these links. If I'm spending 60 grand, I'm getting a skid steer. You know what I mean? So you're only gonna get one instead of two? Well, I'll buy us both one one day. But <laughs> you guys heard that? That's on video. 
Write that down. Write that down. <laughs> I'm sending that to the bank. All right, cool. Let's keep it going. All right, guys. So at about this time, it's about 3.30 in the afternoon. We're getting a little tired, but we uh, came and stumbled across the Bobcat booth. And as you can see, Brandon is a kid in a candy store. I know he's interested in upgrading to some of this equipment in the near future, probably the next 18 to 24 months. He's got these mini excavators, the uh, front end loaders, the Bobcat, skid steer, you know. Uh, he's a big fan of these. He runs these a lot back in the day with his uh, concrete job and then also doing subcontract snow removal work for his friend. And so he's no uh, stranger to these units. Uh, I wonder what the retail is on some of these Bobcats. It's got to be... Maybe somebody leave me a comment down below. Fact check me. It's probably about 60000 bucks. I'm sure it gets even crazier on the price point with all the uh, different attachments. But I know Brandon, uh, he's got his eye on landscaping and big hardscaping installs. Uh, I guarantee you he'll pass uh, my business this year, if not next year. Uh, the kid is just kicking butt and he's hungry, man. He's hungry for it. And uh, I wish him nothing but the best. It was cool just seeing him uh, go to the show again for the second year. Last year he was like a cow looking at a new gate. Had no idea what he was looking at. To a degree, and now this year he—I uh, I can't believe how much he's grown. His camera presence, his uh, ability to talk to people, and uh, just his business mindset. Um, you know, he gets to hang around with Mike Bedell all day uh, during the summer, so those guys learn a lot from each other. And uh, Brandon gets to—you uh, know—pick the brain of Mike, which is really cool. But anyway, Brandon, uh, when he saw these things, he started jumping in and out like uh, like a spider monkey, which is pretty funny. So uh, these right here, uh, Bobcat is. Probably uh, one of the bigger names uh, in terms of this type of equipment. A lot of guys also use Caterpillar. I think uh, we stumbled upon uh, some of their uh, displays in one of the next booths. I think Brandon is definitely looking more towards Cat versus uh, the Bobcats. I'm kind of curious the difference. What do you guys think? I'm still learning how this all works with uh, these kind of units. But which ones do you guys prefer if you had to pick? Bobcat or Caterpillar? Uh, that's a really popular question that I have. I know Brandon is definitely more of a cat guy. Uh, versus a bobcat guy up next we are at the x mark booth and the uh, wine guards booth i should say might as well have been called the x mark booth <laughs> but uh, this one right here was the new cub cadet uh, zero term they had the uh, 972 i think it's called it was right next to that big diesel 96 uh, x mark mower and this one right here is with the uh, dual wheels in the back and the steering wheel up front a lot of you guys have seen this before this right here is the new uh, commercial zero turn from Cub Cadet. Uh, shout out to the Cub Cadet folks. They're really, really good people. Very classy. Uh, this mower right here is designed for like municipality work, uh, for steep hills and slopes. Uh, I will say it's uh, an expensive unit. I think it's like 15 to 18 grand. So it's definitely not a standard mower for guys like us, you know, uh, doing commercial work like uh, wide open parks and fields and commercial uh, acreage. But if you're on those steep slopes, look at that uh, wide pattern with those dual wheels. Uh, that thing is definitely a tank. Uh, we're right next to it was the uh, 96 diesel X Mark, and uh, both of them uh, just whams, wide area mowers. Uh, definitely can do a lot of damage with these guys in a short amount of time. Uh, I like the ability for the X Mark though, because it can flip up on those wings and you can get into smaller areas, especially for storage, uh, which is really cool. But both really good mowers. Check this out. These are the Tweels. The seven year patent on John Deere has expired. So you're starting to see them roll out onto a bunch of other uh, lawnmower brands now. And then as you guys can see right here, we got the X Mark Starus. This is the little guy. I think it's the 34 uh, E series. And then right next to it is the, um, I think that is 62 Kohler uh, S series next to it. Uh, the only thing I didn't like on the 34 was the way that you adjust it. But you know what? For those smaller gated backyards, uh, I don't really feel like you're going to be adjusting them that much. So if you want to leave it at 3.5 or 4 inches for those backyards that are fenced in, I think you'll be fine with this E-Series uh, with the way it adjusts. But uh, the Starus, man, made a splash. A lot of people were checking out. A lot of people were really starting to dig it, you know? All right. Another cool booth that was at the show was the Bobcat booth. A lot of you guys love Bobcat. Uh, shout out to Chance Daily Hustle. And a lot of you guys were talking about the new Quick Cat over the last few weeks and months. And this other bad boy right here, which is the Predator, I think, 7000. Uh, I would love to have the opportunity to demo one of these mowers. I see a lot of guys using them on YouTube and Instagram. Uh, not the biggest brand where we live, but uh, the Quick Cat, this is the new redesigned one. And it was actually a pretty cool uh, mower when I got to use it down at the GIE. Uh, the one that Stanley Dirt Monkey and I did a review video on was the one previous, and they changed a lot of the stuff that we nitpicked apart uh, and made those improvements on this new model, including the uh, 
deck lift assist lever right there and then also the uh, throttle speed they put in little dampeners for those hand uh, controls which is really really cool so kudos to those guys for hearing feedback from uh, people in the community uh, not just standing myself but just other folks in general uh, Bobcat seems to have their stuff together man a lot of uh, powerful power plants on the cowies there and uh, just seemed like a pretty overall good mower so I don't know if you guys are Bobcat fans for the turf division let me know let me know what you guys are running and how you guys like them all right, as we're walking around the show, there was a, a car dealer there. I think it's a LaFontaine guys. It's a big dealer brand by up, uh, up by us. And Brandon's over here checking out all the 450, even 550 dumps and stake dumps. Uh, they had a lot of big trucks up there. Guys, I did my best to convert him to the light side, but he wanted to stay with uh, Team Chevy. And uh, you know what? Good for him. I'm excited to see him roll in uh, a new truck. It's definitely a game changer for him. But look at these dump trucks, man. Totally crazy. The next part, as we were getting a little bit later into the day, about 4 o'clock, we were uh, catching up at the Hustler booth. We got our friend Mike Fidel over there, and he's just kind of hanging, getting ready for the giveaway. We're all just kind of buying time at this point. And uh, they had a new walk-behind. Uh, at least this was new to me. I have never seen one with this uh, motorcycle style hand grip where uh, the throttle turns on the handlebars, but then also the whole uh, unit turns left and right uh, at the same time. I just thought it was a really fascinating design. I personally have never seen anything like that. Uh, a lot of the Hustler brand, uh, it seems like a little bit more maybe price point sensitive, more budget conscious, uh, maybe not all the bells and whistles, but I'll say straight up, uh, a lot of guys love them, a lot of guys run them, and uh, they cut. When Stanley and I were hanging out with Ed Wright, we used one of the Hustler stand-ons, uh, and it was a, a solid, very rigid mower. It wasn't a lot of comfort to it, but you know what? It did cut, and for probably half the price of a lot of the other mowers out there, uh, if you're just getting started or you're running your business you know, as a side hustle or just getting going, uh, definitely a good brand. So uh, Bedell's over there. We're talking about the, uh, the hand grips and uh, how the fact that we have never seen that before or... Uh, I think he said he might have seen them on mowers back in the day. Uh, not the most popular design, but I thought it was pretty uh, intriguing. And my biggest question was comfort. I wonder how comfort it is running uh, those type of mowers all day with that kind of a design. At any rate, they're still pretty sweet looking mowers. Uh, I know Mike and I were just cutting up and having a good time here and debating back and forth if you're getting your business going, how this would probably be a good mower for somebody just getting started. But uh, a lot of the Hustler stuff, it looked pretty uh, solid built, man. If uh, if you guys like Hustler and you run them, leave me a comment down below. I'd love to hear uh, if you guys are using those. But seems like a good brand. So uh, we're just walking through the rest of the show here now, just hanging out. And Brandon uh, found the Caterpillar booth, and he wanted to go double back and check in and jump inside those things. Uh, Brandon, like I said earlier, he's a big cat guy, and I know he wanted to get his hands on some of those pieces of equipment. Uh, this right here is Brandon Carpenter. He's another uh, long hair guy out of Lansing, about an uh, hour west of me. And we were just hanging out uh, all the time. Uh, he actually gave me the inspiration for my back rack uh, light bar setup. So big shout out to Brandon. Really appreciate him stopping by saying, hey. And uh, we're just kind of all uh, rolling from booth to booth at this point, man. It's about 4, 4.30, and uh, we're getting ready for the giveaway at about 4.45, 5 o'clock. And then uh, we stumbled across this uh, Black Widow Spider Edition uh, F250 lifted. This was like 90 to 100 grand. All right, what do you think? This is nice. This is the one My you want? Color. Yes. Black and yellow? Black and yellow, black and yellow. <laughs> Jinx! Oh, yeah, Alright, check this out. Oh, just a track upgrade. 259D. See, this is what I like about this. I mean, this probably has a backup camera. Backup camera? It, it has a backup camera, but I like the bigger windshield in the back of these other ones. Sure. Um, more visibility. You know? Oh, there's your backup camera, right? Yeah, yeah. I didn't know that. High tech, high tech. It's not only the trucks I got them, no? Yeah, right. <laughs> Yeah, that way when the trees jump out at you, right? Right. And then the uh, other one on the other side of the booth was the front end loader. And Brandon's like, yep, this is Big Boy Club. I can't wait to get uh, some commercial parking lots, put a push box and something like that, and uh, get dirty. So this is the kind of stuff that you can see Brandon. He's just thinking, man. He's scheming. I know for a fact that uh, in the next few years, he is going to be uh, you know, looking at a piece of equipment like this. And he is all in, man. It's so cool to, to see his growth. So uh, right here, we're pretty much wrapping up the day. It's five o'clock. We're uh, getting ready for the giveaway. Brandon's claiming he's winning the uh, steel chainsaw that they were giving away, <laughs> which was awesome. He loves his steel uh, power equipment. And uh, Brandon and I were just both laughing that. We both literally 
never win anything in giveaways, man. I don't know if you guys can relate, but uh, we were just hanging out, waiting for our name to be called. There's about, you know, two, 300 people there, which is pretty cool. Brandon's uh, ambitiously waiting for his name to get called for that chainsaw. And Bedell is a realist, and he's like, dude, it ain't happening, like, statistically. And Brandon, Brandon's like, no, for real, just watch, get ready. Mike over here is like, nope, not happening. Brandon's like, I'm telling you, dude, I'm telling you, I'm going to get it. And uh, we're just laughing back and forth. So I told Brandon it's probably easier for him to get one from a company than to uh, to win this giveaway. So anyway, that's the uh, the three amigos signing off from the 2019 MGIA. We saw so many of you guys there, so many fans. It was a really good time. And uh, thanks for saying hey if you guys stopped us. Uh, we'll definitely be at the Weingarts Open House on Wednesday over in Farmington, Michigan. So if you guys are there, definitely come say hey. But uh, this was a good time. I really appreciate the all you guys that came and supported us. Uh, it was a really good show. Thanks for Brandon and Mike for uh, coming with me as well and me uh, getting to go hang out with those guys. It was a really good time. A lot of good faces and uh, people that we got to saw. So anyway, guys, that's pretty much it. We'll wrap it up. The three amigos, we're out of here. We'll catch you guys on the next video. Peace.